Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. We are in the vampire's lair. I always told you I was a vampire, so might as well show you where I live. This is my lair. And this is where I will share with you my top five vampire perfumes. Tis the season, so why not get bloody jolly together, shall we? <laughs> Subscribe to my channel first if you haven't already. Push the notification bell to be notified every time I post a new video. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob all spelled together, for extra perks, extra content, exclusive footage, and much, much more. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main channel. Go follow me there as well and partake in the live chats. Hi, my ghoulishly, ghastly, ghostly co-chator vampires in the chat. Are you ready for this top five vampire perfumes list? Well, let me begin, as they say, begin to begin. Begin to begin, in the beginning, we had an elixir. Oh yes, the elixir for a vampire, modern day vampire. This thing works. A lot of perfume snobs are gonna say, ew, but guess what? A lot of people also say, ew, when they see a vampire. So it's all good, I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. Here's the first one, Sauvage Elixir. Look at that dark, dark bottle and that dark, dark, dark smell. This one, in its first iteration that I own, with the first formulation, I think they've reformulated it now, um, still has oak moss listed on the back of, of the packaging. And it also has an ambergris Mixed in with Ambroxan, um, it's so intense. It's so intense. It's almost like condensed blood in a perfume form. You got to know how to dose this. If you're a vampire that drinks a lot of blood and cannot stop themselves, very much like True Blood, the TV show. Well, TV show, you know, here in the vampire world, we call it a reality TV show because I mean, you know, it felt like, yeah, that's what, that's how it happens. <laughs> uh, you got to know how to dose this because if you exaggerate with it, it takes over. But if you know how to dose it just right, it's heavenly. The elixir, deep, smooth, round, flows like gushing, buttery blood. Mmm. Really, really beautiful. And as I always say, perfume knows no gender. So it doesn't matter if you are a lady, a gentleman, or anything in between, or above or underneath or beyond. If it smells good to you on you, wear it. Just dose it right. Don't spray it too close to the neck area so that somebody can bite you. Uh, you know, you need to leave these areas clean for the kisses and the bites. So behind the knee, really good, or uh, right above the belly area. Not really chest, not too close to the nose, a little bit lower there. Uh, or you know what, I also on the legs, I can spray a little bit on the leg. Let me do that right now. Oh, really distant, but yeah, it's already climbing up. Gorgeous, really, really gorgeous. That's my number one. Number two, I will actually project here for you. Number two is Incense Zagorsk by Comte de Garçon from the Incense series. Yes, we have this gorgeously black bottle, black like the night. Coincidentally, also here, this is a, a kind of a dark blue color, but it is also a night shade blue. So it is also in the darkness of night. It's a bottle that fits a vampire. This one as well, incense. It's kind of the incense that a vampire can smell because, you know, vampires don't like the cross in the church. So incense is usually present uh, in, in, in churches. But this one, this one has heft <laughs> to it in a different way. It is for the vampire that lives isolated far away from humanity. It's, it's for, for the vampire that wants to change their ways. They have given up on humanity. They are, you know, solitude is their 
They have selected solitude. They have selected isolation somewhere in Siberia or Russia, far, far away in an icy, snowy landscape, living in a cottage somewhere far, far away, relatively close to some village so that they can eat something from time to time. But mostly isolation, solitude, a nomadic life, if you may. That's what this perfume smells of. Interesting combination of incense as well as carrot. And the carrot adds a bitter note to Zagorsk. And it almost has like a, a bloody flavor to it. You don't drink or eat the perfume. The flavor is olfactive. It's a smell. A smell can also be a flavor to me at least. So what Zagorsk does deliver is kind of like um, a metallic note that's almost decaying. And it gives you a hint of an idea of blood. And that's the carrot with the incense. Very, very particular perfume. This is not the most popular from the incense range, by the way, which uh, comprises five fragrances, five basically highlighting five religious or spiritual points of the world of, you know, Christianity, uh, uh, what is it, Protestantism, Hinduism, Shintoism. So, you know, there's Kyoto for Japan, incense, there's Jasalmer, there's uh, Zagorsk, there's uh, Avignon, and there's uh, Orzazate, which is really hard to pronounce for me as well. So, this is the more austere version of incense. This is the solitude, isolation. This is, this is the Russian vampire uh, perfume. Very, very, very fascinating. Very, very fascinating. Beautiful, beautiful smell. Uh, I don't have it with me right now. I do own a bottle, but I don't have it right now here. So I am showing you the image of it instead. By the way, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. And I have not been sponsored by any of these brands. Just letting you guys know. Oh, Bible believing Christian says, I love me some incense and fragrances, especially frankincense and myrrh. Myrrh is amazing in perfumes. I love it as well. Really, really love it as well. Now, the, um, the next one is a classic vampire fragrance, in my opinion. Let me show you the pitta. I have reviewed Hypnotic Poison Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum. Not Eau de Toilette. I've reviewed all of them. But as a top five vampire perfume list, Hypnotic Poison Eau de Parfum is the one. Not Eau de Toilette. This thing smells of blood and cherries. Okay? It is a metallic cherry a dark, bloody cherry, vanilla, plasticky concoction. It is insanely intense. And in my review of this perfume, go check out my review of Hypnotic Poison Eau de Parfum. I literally, in the perfume, in the review, which I made several years ago, I state, this is the perfume for a vampire. So, of course, it had to be in my top five vampire perfume list, you know, for the season. And this is uh, a cutout from one of Christian Dior's own ad campaigns for Hypnotic Poison de Parfum. Now, this one was released in, in the 2010s uh, by Demachy. Demachy is the nose, uh, Francois Demachy is the nose behind this one. And so this is one of the ad campaigns. The first launch, and I do have the first um, formulation of Hypnotic Poison Eau de Parfum, you know that it's one of the earlier formulations if you still find a bottle that has that little string around here in faux leather, and then it has that kind of fake wax Dior seal, and then the little kind of string, you see it there hanging off a little bit as well. Because the newer version doesn't have that anymore. You know, they, they're going cheaper and cheaper. They're saving money wherever they can. So they don't do that little kind of ribbon with a plastic wannabe wax seal anymore in the current bottles, but the first launches all had that. My perfume has it as well. It is a cherry drop, cherry flavored cough, syrupy, bloody concoction. This thing is not for everyone. Okay. Interesting to also see this ad campaign 
with almost like rouge noir, this kind of blood red nail polish of this pale vampire skin texture. Dior knows what they're doing here when they're kind of showing us this perfume. It's literally like a vampire is holding it. Um, how would it be? This would be the direction. Holding it like that. Something like that. Total vampire vibe. Smell it. Not a blind purchase. This one is really, really intense and it can be obnoxious. Cough syrupy, cherry, bitter almond blood. That's what this thing is. It's hardcore. It's amazing. It's a staple. The next one, I have to say, and I'm going to show it to you in two different bottles. Let me show you the first one. This is the original. I mean, look at this. It literally looks like the bottles that I have in my vampire mansion here in the fashion bunker, the vampiric fashion bunker. This is such a vibe. Serge Luton. Serge Luton, tubereuse criminel. The criminal tuberose. This is the splash bottle it used to come in. Absorb it. Absorb this juice. Absorb the color of this liquid. The shape of the bottle. So amazing. It's almost like it contains like blood in it. Just like to... <laughs> sip a little, you know, between meals, to snack, to snack between meals. And the, the, the juice is so dark and intense. That tuberose ripens and it's indolic and it's dark. And tuberose, you could, you, you can go either way. Some perfumes have tuberose in them and it's a light-hearted tuberose. But other perfumes analyze the more criminal, dark, sensual, and obnoxious side of tuberose. And that would be the indolic, almost camphorous side of tuberose. And that would be tuberose criminel. Now, let me show you the updated bottle. Both of them are beautiful, by the way. The updated one is really hard to keep it up, standing up because it's called the Gratte Ciel, which is the skyscraper bottle. Completely black like the night. Again, very vampiric. Let me show you the new bottle, Serge Lutang, Tuberus Criminel. Look at this thing. It's I love this bottle as well, but you don't see the liquid in it anymore. It's very elongated. I have this in my collection, just not here right now with me. However, this bottle is so beautiful. The perfume is even more beautiful. It starts off obnoxiously camphorous, indolic, screechy, and then just like the first vampiric bite, well, it, may, it might hurt in the beginning, but then you get addicted to it, and it's like a drug, and you need more and more and more of that vampire coming back to give you that sensuality. What comes to mind is Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie, Francis Ford Coppola's movie, which is amazing. You really see the transformation of the victims of Dracula, how they want more, how they desire him, how they crave him, how that first aggressive approach is violent, but that, that violence turns into passion and into um, a, a more softer letting go of your senses. And this is what Tuberos Criminel does. When you first spray it on, it gives you that violence. It's very violent and brutal. But as it dries down, it pretty soon becomes soft, tame, it becomes like a lullaby. It hypnotizes you to keep coming back for more. That's what this does. It is not just one of the top five perfumes for vampires, but I want to say this perfume itself is a sort of a vampire in terms of how it treats you, how it treats its wearer, how it creates this symbiotic addictive relationship between you and itself. It is really, really, really amazing. Very, very interesting perfume. And of course, had to be on my top five fragrances um, for vampires. Now, the next one is my number five. Number five, I do have here with me. So let me blend this beauty out. Let me move back in to my mansion, darling. So many mysteries in this place. It's almost like being in Castlevania. Loved the cartoon. 
Oh my gosh, it was one of my favorites. Oh, that, the silence and the sadness. What a gorgeous cartoon. Anyway, I would say that this next perfume is the perfume that I would attribute to Alucard. Alucard is Dracula's son. Coincidentally, if you really dig into it and read the name Alucard backwards, it actually spells Dracula. And for that setting in Castlevania, I would envision, you know, in the, in the Carp Carpathian Mountains, solitude, really ancient nature. Some trees are thousands of years old. They're kind of falling apart and decrepit, but there's so many places you can find where, like, you have the feeling that no human being has ever been there before. And Dracula's castle has the power to appear and disappear wherever he wants it to. And, uh, well... My little mansion might just be Dracula's castle. You never know. I'm not going to reveal all my secrets, but Alucard is definitely wearing this. Another black bottle, another dark, dark, dark perfume. It's Anteus by Chanel. For all the people saying like, yeah, I have to print the name on the screen. There you go. You can see the bottle. You can read the name. Anteus Chanel. It is so alluring, inviting, dangerous, sure of itself, but it's a loner. You know, this is a person who lives alone. They know exactly what they are. They know exactly who they are. It, it's a weird, ambery, incensey, peppery honey with aldehydes in the opening, but it's, it, it has a bloody accord in it, you know, especially the current formulation. It goes into that um, 80s, uh, <laughs> Jacques Paul is the nose behind this one, released 1981 slash 1982. It's that powerhouse 80s masculine fragrance, even though perfume is not no gender for me. However, you can see the pour homme, like literally, <laughs> they're trying to tell you, it's for guys, it's for guys. Uh, it has a ginormous character, okay? This is, this is Dracula. This is Dracula, not just a vampire, but this is Dracula overpowering, overbearing, but then Alucard wears it the sun, because as this one dries down, that delicate suave incense and honey accord kind of trickle through. And, um, and as we know, Alucard is, is more tame. He doesn't hate humanity as much as Dracula does. He hasn't been hurt in, a, in the same way as Dracula has been hurt. And he has more of a solitary bohemian stance as a vampire. And that's what Anteos is. It's, for the perfume world standards, you could say it's ancient, right? It's from the 80s. So it has that vibe of a vampire that's lived so many centuries. So we have the, the age, but it also has the depth and the knowledge, it's a very wise perfume. There's a lot of wisdom here. This is, this is a perfume that never really sh like shrieks and screams at you in the forefront, even though it's powerful when you first spray it on. It's a perfume that knows a lot of things, but it doesn't really tell them to you unless you're not ready to listen to them. And it's also not the Chanel perfume in terms of bestsellers. You're always gonna find it on the bottom shelves. It's going to be hiding in the darkness. It's going to be hiding in the shadows. What we do in the shadows, we wear Anteus in the shadows. You know, you're going to see Blue de Chanel on the top shelves. You're going to see Allure. You're going to see Allure Edition Blanche, Allure Homme Sport. All of that stuff is like right there in your face. Then you're going to have Egoist Platinum. Then you're going to have Pour Monsieur. Then you're, in some countries, you're going to have Egoist. And then at the bottom, 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 you're going to find creeping in the darkness and in the shadows, Anteus. 
and that would be this one. This is my number five. Um, oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> and Jesus in the chat is like, let me spray some aunt. Ah. Kev is like, I need to get me some Anteos. This is beautiful for this time of year. It is also a great, great autumn perfume, a great deep, can be dry, but it can also be warm depending on your mood fragrance. It really, it's, it's multifaceted. Just like a vampire can transform, change shape into any shape they want to, this perfume is also a shift, kind of a shift shaper in a way. And for those of you who stayed this long into the video, there's also a little bonus, number six. I had to, just because I do believe that the ultimate vampire was always Coco Chanel. And so my number six would have to be this little black as the knight again with the gold streak running through it as a dagger, Coco Chanel. This is Chanel number five. The extrait. It has to be the extrait. This is like a little blood potion. Look at this. I only have a couple of droplets left and then I gotta get myself a refill, which is already waiting to be unboxed and opened. But I can tell you this much. This is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous perfume. You got your aldehydic opening notes, then it kind of goes down into the uh, powdery aspect of it, the iris, the orris root, the incense, the patchouli, the vanilla, the civet. It used to be civet, now they don't do real civet anymore, so it's a substitute for civet. Oak moss, there's a substitute for oak moss in it as well. May rose, regular rose, Ilang Ilang, and of course, the most important ingredient in here would be the jasmine. The jasmine from the fields of grass in France, in the south of France. And coincidentally, this is also the smell of snow because Ernest Beau, who released and created this perfume, was released in 1921. He kind of got inspired by snow in the First World War because he was in Russia. Again, another Russian moment here battling and fighting on the front, he was spending a lot of time in winter and in snow and thinking and envisioning how would snow smell like. And apparently Chanel number no. five, the formula of it was created way before Coco Chanel was even in the picture as allegedly, and everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts, everything's alleged, just my opinion. He already delivered a ready formula to Coco. She just smelled it, loved it immediately and said, yes, this, this is it. It was legend wants it again, the fifth sample that he gave to her to smell. But there are versions of the story that say that she kind of pushed him in a certain direction, how to develop, like, oh, what ingredient, what's the most expensive ingredient in this perfume? Allegedly, he said, uh, jasmine. And then she said, put more of it in it. Put like a thousand times more of it in it. But also there's another legend that says, no, the perfume was already finished and ready before he even met her. This is his vision, his poetry of spending time alone in the middle of the snow, not knowing if he's going to survive or not. It's the smell of snow and survival. Again, loneliness, solitude, being sure of yourself that you can make it through any trial or tribulation, very much like a vampire would, like only a vampire could actually. Oh, let me add, the, and let me add a little bit of that onto Anteo's. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, they blend masterfully. Mm. I, you know what? It's, it, oh, it's so, <laughs> I smell Chanel number no. five, Parfum, and I'm, I'm done. I'm done. We're done. This video is over. Come to my lair and grab a bite. Let me know your top five vampire fragrances down below, if you have any. And thumb up this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe. Subscribe to my fangs. Until next time, never give up on fang love. Bye.